between a heart and three. That was so scary. <laughs> I spend a lot of time in there just looking at things. The formations of the rock in there are just, they're unreal. Like they're these big pillars of rock that stick up out of nowhere and they're pretty incredible features, you know, let alone things to ski, just, just something to be amongst. And um, I think that's, that's valuable on its own anyway. It's just like this, I don't know, this fall into oblivion of like these spines and shoots and just so many possibilities. It's incredible because you stand on the top, you go through the gate, you stand on the top, and all you can see is these rolling meadows, and you're like, surely this is not, surely this is not gnarly. Like, what, what could it possibly be? And you go a little further and a little further, and you sneak your nose over the edge, and then before you know it, you're standing on the top of like massive cliffs, huge exposure, and you can just see these like handrails just peeling down in all directions. I think what patrol do on any mountain is hugely important and often undervalued, but especially at a place like TC. When, you, when it comes to keeping people safe and like dealing with the risk of anything releasing in any way, like these guys have to consider all of these factors and like none of us who are out there riding it are gonna stop and think about it. So they have to absolutely dial it in so that we can be hot and loose as it were. That's primed now. And we just put it on a bomb rope so we don't lose the shots when we throw them. We've got over 350 avalanche paths of triple cone, and a lot of those get loaded in our classic storm cycle. So everyone that gets affected by the current avalanche problem needs to at least be looked at. Anything that's going to be producing a dangerous avalanche, we need to throw a explosive charge in. On a good morning, we can throw shots on the upper paths, which are larger and more dangerous. And then as we ski through the lower paths, if it's soft slab, we can ski cut a lot of them, which speeds it up. Because the Hollywood Bowl and the Mototaku shoots are so steep, if we go in there two hours after the storm or in the storm and start throwing explosive charges, we're gonna strip all the new snow out of there. Whereas if we give it a day or even a few hours, that the snow might have a chance to bond to the old snow surface and we could go in there the next morning and no avalanche has it and we can just crack it, which would be the dream result. If you can ski most of Treble Cone, if you're like happy riding mineshaft or you're cool dropping into that steep stuff under the lift, there's no steeper than that in general, it's just, it's just kind of intimidating. It's, it's very exciting terrain and you learn something new every time you go there. And I've heard that especially from Sam Lee. He's an animal. There's a reason why he's called the Ibex. Scary. Moving down that thing from top to bottom, it's, it's just so much fun. <laughs> the thing about the shoots is that I never run out of challenges. Like, there's always something more difficult, and there's always another way to ski a line, and there's always, like, 
There's always a new way to approach something that you haven't seen before or that you've seen but you were too scared to hit or that you didn't have the skills to hit. Like it's just, yeah, well I think there's, yeah, I think that's, yes, I want to be in there when I'm 80. <laughs>